Well, Evan, man, we appreciate you joining with us to talk all things Zeus and Lightning Node Connect here. You know, to kick this off, I guess, tell us, um, I, I, I personally never listened to a podcast where you were on it, and just for the sake of everyone else, um, I'd love to hear a little bit just about yourself, your background, and then maybe we can dive in a bit more into the projects. Yeah, where to begin? Uh, I'm a you know, Greek-American kid from uh, Queens and Long Island. I uh, studied uh, computer science, got into Bitcoin uh, during college, but uh, sort of on the tail end of it. I guess when I got into school, you know, Occupy Wall Street was going on. And, uh, you know, we had seen the uh, result of that whole mess. I had an uncle who's really like uh, got me into Austrian economics. And uh, despite, you know, having this background in Austrian econ and being a computer science major, didn't really click for me Bitcoin. Like I knew about it my freshman year, but it wasn't until like junior, senior year I was really getting into it when I was using it and, and saw it firsthand. And yeah, from there, you know, uh, went down a bit of a rabbit hole, you know, went down the altcoin path. I, I was mining some shit coins on some GPUs in my dorm room. Then, you know, headed more towards Bitcoin. Was working in cybersecurity for, what, five, six years where I wore a lot of different hats. Front end, back end, work on cloud, worked as an analyst using the product. Uh, then I worked at uh, Kraken a little bit and helped with their Lightning integration. And uh, now just working on Zeus and working a little bit with Lightning Labs and trying to make Lightning, you know, something super easy and accessible for people to use. Uh, and, and the focus right now is just providing Zeus as a tool to use Lightning in the most sovereign way possible, you know, where you control your funds or your channels. Pretty much you're getting the full kitchen sink of controls in your pocket with you, whether it's on iOS or Android, you know, with, and with a focus on, you know, privacy. Try to cut out third-party middlemen wherever possible, you know, except for when, you know, trade-offs are acceptable and, and those are always opt-in. Everything is free and open source. All our dependencies, our Android builds are, uh, you know, completely reproducible now. And uh, we've got a lot of awesome features coming our latest version of Zeus uh, that I'm really stoked to talk to you guys about today. Very cool. That's awesome, your background on uh, the uh, the education, Austrian Ecom, and helping crack in with Lightning, and now here you are. You mentioned, uh, like a lot of us, you did um, deal with altcoins, and you quickly route corrected and are Bitcoin only now. Were you lucky enough not to get wrecked, or did you maybe go through something a lot of folks are going through potentially right now, just trusting third parties? Do you have a short story about that? Uh, yeah, so I was probably pretty much a wash, you know. It was a good experience in that, you know, it was interesting to like discern like you know what products or like what coins were just uh you know purely purely crap you know or, or just like a marketing pitch whether it be on a forum or through different venues you know there, there were definitely other coins that were more legit that the lesson was a little harder to ascertain like i was so i'm someone who's really interested in privacy something like uh, Zcash really resonated for, to me. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not until you see, like, you know, how, how the uh, the trusted ceremony was set up and, uh, you know, the shakiness around that. But beyond that, you know, the Zcash Foundation, how, you know, a certain percent of the mine coins go to them, the centralized control. Yeah, it was, it was really interesting and, and it's a really great example, like, for me. I had to get burnt firsthand to learn that lesson. And, you know, I, I don't think it's anything to be ashamed of. I'll talk about it pretty openly. But, uh, you know, getting burnt is really a great way to learn. And all I could hope from what we're seeing in the last few weeks with the FTX fallout is that, you know, I really never like to hear when people lose their, their money, their funds, their savings. On the plus side, we can think about all the people who are learning from this experience. And uh, hopefully it's a brand new generation of people who are Bitcoin only who, you know, hopefully are course correcting like I did at one point. Yeah. Yeah. You're, I think you're spot on there. And this is Bobby speaking from the Voltage account for people listening in the future. But I was the same way. I uh, was introduced to this industry via a random token that I thought sounded cool. And then course corrected, learned about Bitcoin and ever since then been on the straight and narrow you could say and <laughs> what i uh 
what I really like about Zeus, you know, I've used your product, Nate, whenever um, I first got started just over a year and a half ago, like really diving into lightning and setting up my node. He helped me get set up on Zeus very quick. And I love the fact that I could manage my node from my mobile phone. You know, a lot of people may not know this who are new to lightning, but you cannot really like run your node on a mobile phone. But what Zeus does is it does allow you to tap into your node and accept payments whenever your phone screen is off and all of that technicality. But could you simplify that and explain that for folks so they can understand the value of Zeus and how it allows you to tap into your node and some of those features that you're enabling? Yeah, absolutely. So we've really seen a real popularization in uh, these node platforms uh, in the last few years. So mostly been revolving around the Raspberry Pi platform, which is like a single board computer and known to be pretty cheap, although I've seen prices going up. And uh, basically, it's they're like Bitcoin nodes in a box, right? Like you'll, you'll download Bitcoin, sync the whole blockchain, uh, then you'll put your Lightning software of choice on top of that. And uh, basically, Zeus lets you connect to that node remotely. So the node will either be tucked away at home, and you're connecting either via a VPN or Tor traditionally, or it's in the cloud. Perhaps it's on Voltage. Zeus and Voltage makes for a really good user experience, I would say. And uh, yeah, you ha- get all the controls to this node. So you can be managing the on-chain wallet that comes with these Lightning implementations and uh, have full coin control there. Uh, You can go and open or close channels, change the fee rates on any one of those channels or all of them at the same time. You can see how much you've collected in fees from routing if you happen to be a routing node. Basically, I wanted to make a power user app that just empowers people, right? Like Zeus is not going to be the lightning app you introduce someone to bitcoin with and and that's fine you know we're always trying to lower that barrier to entry but uh there's a lot of concepts you got to learn like you know how channels work the relation to on-chain payments i think down the road we might do a more user-friendly app something with the node just built in all at once but uh, if we go down that road we're not going to abandon zeus by any means we're going to develop them in tandem and nate i know you're an avid fan of zeus i'd love for you to maybe share um, some of your experience for those who have not set it up no so ever since i uh, started running my own node my first time i ever so i i had sort of a three-step process right i went from um using the jewel extension for those that don't know, to actually visualize my node channels way back in the day, which is like a browser extension that you plug your macaroons into and it'll show you your balances and your channels and you can buy stuff. And then it was Zap, which was Jack Mahler's first sort of thing. Um, That was fully open source and stuff, but it's not really maintained, hasn't really been maintained for a while. Uh, and then and then Zeus and Zeus is has a extremely active Evan correct me if I'm wrong uh, contribution team right free and open source people are just working on this thing new features all the time it's great if you're running your own node even if it's not at home like you said you can run it on voltage and you can essentially have that sovereign power uh, on the go uh, which is which is pretty cool if you're going somewhere like El Salvador or something and you want to buy something you're essentially remoting into your node on your phone there's never been anything like that before in the world and like just now just even thinking about it just kind of blows my mind so Evan uh, <laughs> yeah so that's all I got to say about that but um, yeah Evan go ahead and comment on that yeah I love to hear it uh, it's just been great I would I would say Zeus is, is my first major open source project it's definitely been rewarding there's, there's definitely been a lot of challenges a lot of brick walls we've hit and had to figure out how to get around them and i think we're about to get around one that we're seeing right now as it pertains to users connecting remotely from home and we'll get into that in a little bit yeah it's it's just been amazing uh, running the project we have a really awesome team of contributors from all over the world we got 30 plus contributors uh we got like 500 plus stars on on github you know thousands and thousands probably approaching 10,000 active users on uh the application yeah it's really like a collective effort like i know like a lot of the contributions come from me but um you know we've got people who've come from fang companies come to work at zeus and then use that as an outlet to get bitcoin only jobs which has really warmed my heart and really ha- 
happy to see great people get connected like that. You've had people whose software and hardware I, I've used in the past uh, come and contribute to the project. We've got some stick from Trezor who's come contribute. Yeah, it's it's been amazing. It's been a lot of years in, in, in work and progress. Like there's still a lot of stuff to be done. But every time I see someone use it out in the wild for something substantive, uh, it really makes it all worth it. All right. So I'm just going to sort of pivot slightly. So you joined Lightning Labs, right? Uh, I am doing some work with Lightning Labs, but on contract. Mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not an employee. Ah, I see. Okay. And what um, can you talk a little bit? I guess let's 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 go into Lightning Node Connect a little bit, and then we'll circle back to Zeus here. So, can you talk a little bit about how until Lightning Node Connect users that are running uh, their own nodes connect to external apps and services and then talk about how lightning node connect fits into that sure thing so uh so typically when you have a computer running at home right uh it's you know on your network but it's behind your router which has like a a firewall if i'm on my phone right or i'm on the web i can't directly connect to you just because you plugged in your device onto into your router right so what people typically do so that they can have their Zeus app talk to their node back home is they use something called Tor Hidden Services. Now, Tor, a lot of people may think as just like, oh, that's the shadowy dark web where people buy drugs or whatever. And, uh, you know, to a certain extent, that's true. Uh, you know, Tor's hosted a whole bunch of darknet sites, stuff like um, the Silk Road. But it's beyond, it's more than that. It's uh, it's a tool that people use to circumvent censorship in authoritarian countries. It also makes for a really interesting networking tool for people who want to punch through any sort of firewall, whether it be the great firewall of China or their firewall at home blocking off their devices at home from the rest of the web. So what people do is they create these Tor hidden services. They get these long strings generated paired with a port and and they could pop that into Zeus and using Zeus's built-in Tor process, they can go through through the Tor network to their node back home, you know, make their payments and modify their node, whatever they need to do. Now, the problem is that the Tor network has been going under a lot of strain the last, I'd say, seven, maybe eight months now. It's been really bad. So if anyone at home wants to take a look at what's going on right now, you could go to status.torproject.org. They'll tell you what's going on. You can see the statuses of everything. You typically want to go and see the V3 Onion Services tab. And that right now says disrupted. Uh, let's say so updated a few seconds ago. So it says we are experiencing a network-wide D DDoS, or Distributed Denial of Service, attempt impacting the performance of the Tor network, which includes both Onion services and non-Onion service traffic. We are currently investigating potential mitigations, and this investigation of potential mitigations has been lasting seven or eight months now. There's been a lot of different theories as to why the network has been experiencing this uh, service degradation, but in a nutshell, Tor is being used more by people, whether they be bad actors or good, it doesn't really matter. There's more people using Tor than there are relay and exit nodes that people can employ. And that just results in a really degraded experience for people. So Tor, you know, they've been working on their mitigations, which really aren't easy and we shouldn't be expecting. Apps that have been depending on it, like I believe like Wasabi Wallet, they've been running campaigns to encourage people to either run their own relays or uh, donate to efforts to fund these relays. And, you know, certainly while that's important, you know, it shouldn't be the only thing that people rely on. So enter Lightning Node Connect. Lightning Node Connect is effectively a great alternative for people who have been connecting remotely to their nodes at home behind their firewalls that have been having a really tough time with Tor. It's really night and day. I think that when people use it for the first time, they're going to be pleasantly surprised with how much better the experience is. I think it's comparable to, you know, connecting to your node over ClearNet, sort of like if you would to just connect to like a voltage instance in the cloud right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Lightning Node Connect, I guess, let's just dive in a little bit more. So there's a product that Lightning Labs has built out over the last couple of years called Lightning Terminal which is sort of a graphical user interface for the Lightning Labs 
product suite loop and pool and i'm sure taro eventually it used to be you had to run this on your own or not i mean on some machine right and but then there uh gosh i I feel like it was earlier this year but it may even been before that terminal web came out and then lightning note connect came out right and this allows you to have the same access as uh your lightning terminal as if you installed it on your own machine but now it's in a web browser anywhere in the world can you talk a little bit about how much of a game changer that is for um just those running nodes in general and and then maybe some other ideas for lightning node connect yeah absolutely so i would say lightning node connect is you know it's pretty much this bridge right get your lightning node connected to wherever you are on the web right you have an internet connection you should be able to reach your lightning node so we, we got the three parts right we got the lightning terminal and that's the ui you're probably familiar with nate was talking about traditionally it was being used for loop and pool now we use a variant of that called uh, terminal web that you can plug into over a lightning node connect so you got that that's where you manage your sessions you're like okay i want a session i wanted to give it this level of permissions so right now it's only re- admin or read only but the lightning uh, labs terminal team is working on fleshing that out and that's going to open up a whole bunch of possibilities we'll get into a bit so we got the terminal that you set up on your machine then we got a mailbox proxy uh so this is pretty much your middleman that's going to help you talk to the outside world it's got like some really novel encryption on it so that even the operator of it can do like very very little to like mess with your session. Like they can't listen in on it. They can't identify you by your node's public key. It's really quite novel. Right now, only Lightning Labs runs a a mailbox proxy to my knowledge, but we're gonna be running one for Zeus uh, really shortly. And uh, we're gonna be releasing some guides and encouraging other services to do the same so that we have like a distributed network of mailbox proxies. So no one operator has like a monopoly or has any incentive to really mess with things. And then lastly, you got the end product where like your client, your clients that is gonna be connecting to your node through this mailbox proxy. And traditionally this has been like a Wasm client, which is like a web assembly binary that sort of runs in your browser. We have basically, brought this over to mobile. So not only does it run, you know, at first it was just running on server side and Golang, then it ran in your web browser so that people on the web could use it. We then rebundled that into an NPM module called LNC Web. That's super easy to use that I built some stuff with. We could talk about in a sec. And uh, now we have bindings for LNC that work on iOS and Android. And shortly we're going to be releasing a new module on NPM called LNC RN. The RN stands for React Native, which is a very popular mobile framework that Zeus actually employs. There's like no, there's going to be no shortage of ways to be using LNC. Yeah, you know, I the way that you could traditionally now connect, at least through LND, right? So we're not talking about CLN, but for LND by Lightning Labs is you need macaroons and sometimes you need these TLS certificate files, which are really, really long uh, strings of, of, of cryptographic data. Right now, there's something called LND Connect, which combines these into a QR code that yeah. you use it's a huge headache though right and it, oh, yeah, it's, it's, not great. it's there's a formatting nightmare cameras it's so much information sometimes your phone camera doesn't even work on it it stinks but with lnc when you generate what's essentially random words i'm sure they come from a library i'm not sure if they're the same library that bitcoin uses it's like 12 words right and then you register them against the app. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm really glad you brought up the pairing phrase. So yeah, so typically right now, if you're to connect to LND over like REST or RPC, right, you need the host information, the port, your admin macaroon, right? And then if you're doing RPC or if you're on REST and you want to make sure that the calls are talking to the right host, you, you're dealing with a certificate. And that stinks, right? In that pairing process I was talking about earlier in Lightning Terminal, yeah, you get a pairing mnemonic that looks similar to like uh, like a Bitcoin seed phrase. And yeah, I think it is actually pulling from that uh, same library of words, but it's just 10 words and it's really easy to transfer over. So from terminal, let's say you want to connect to Zeus in the coming release, you're going to be able to just scan that with your QR code scanner, right? And uh, since it's just 10 words, as opposed to, you know, a long base 64 encrypted TLS key in there, like it's going to be trivial to scan and pull into your 
you're at. And then from there, you can register a password and you're securely connected. Yeah. So the client side will give you an option to enter in a password. And that password was really just used for encrypting your keys that are derived from that uh, pairing phrase after your connection from your storage. So like on the browser side, we'll like put it into the browser's local storage. But since any app can get into that, we want to make sure that's encrypted. That password just unlocks your credentials pretty much. But yeah, like once you initially connect to an application like Terminal Web or, or something like Echo, which is one of my new projects, um, all you have to do is enter in that password you chose for encryption and you'll uh, be able to initialize a reconnection to your node using that same session. Sounds a lot better than macaroons to me. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's using like a lot of the principles of the macaroons under the hood but the presentation to the users is just so much more friendly much less headache you know less data that you have to transfer you know you can get really granular with the controls the same way that you do with your macaroons the way that you're going to be able to granularly pick your permissions moving forward maybe even want to just like give an app some permission to access your node but you know only enough to like spend a certain amount in case there's like a bug or, or the app is like a bad app or like a lot of the stuff that's coming out going to mitigate a lot of people's concerns that they have with like connecting their node in the browser uh, but also open up so much more room for lots of new use cases and applications that a lot of people haven't even thought of so a lot of stuff to be super excited about going forward with lightning node connect yeah speaking about folks that are developing apps that want to use lightning in some way whether it be web apps or phone apps or whatever will this be beneficial for them uh from a from a programming standpoint also yeah so uh web devs are, are definitely going to want to check out the lnc web module that's been published uh now it's out like two or three months and uh we actually use that module in terminal web now so like we built a module that we're now using in-house at Lightning Labs, and we make it super easy to connect to Lightning Node Connect. Basically, a user just needs to pop in a um, pairing phrase that they get from Terminal, uh, as well as a password to make sure that all the keys are saved securely, and then it's off to the races. This module is super easy, and not only does it give you full access to every single call that LND offers, including you know all its subservices, all its fancy stuff from everything from making uh, transactions to managing channels to even doing more advanced stuff like doing PSBT signing. It's a call comes in the box. And to add on to that, not only do you get those LND calls, but you get access to all of the rest of the LND stack. So you get the ability to uh, rebalance your channels with Lightning Loop. You get the ability to buy or sell liquidity to Lightning Pool. You get the ability to have all of the great auditing and accounting tools that are built into Lightning Labs' lesser known tool called Faraday. And in the near future, you will be able to have access to all of the Taro RPCs. So Taro is Lightning Labs' is a new protocol for issuing uh, stable coins and other assets on Bitcoin and Lightning, and Lightning Node Connect is going to plug into that directly. So if you're a developer that's thinking about building a Taro application in the near future, uh, LNC would be a great avenue for you to do so. We don't have Lightning Terminal on Voltage yet, but we are working on it very, very hard, and I'm really excited personally only for it. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, so Voltage really gives you that advantage of being in the cloud, right? So like you don't really have the necessity to use uh, like something to punch through the firewall. Like you don't really need it for NAT punching. But uh, the fact that you get this whole stack of uh, API calls and access to this whole stack is really where, you know, LNC is going to shine on the Voltage stack. So super excited to see that. I feel like all of these major platforms have really gone and ahead and and then integrated in Lightning Terminal. And uh, I, I feel like once we get Voltage on board, it's going to be pretty much everywhere. So yeah, no, no, you guys are working hard. There's a couple of technical bur hurdles you guys got to get over. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I, I know I know it's coming soon. So uh, I'm not going to pressure you guys too much more on that. No, I mean, this, you know, we're, you know, our, I mean, everyone knows. <laughs> um, I just want to say too, it, it's, it's really cool too, because from the reliability standpoint, going back to you know tour and all those issues can you talk about maybe on a high level how we're bypassing the tour issues with lnc just a little bit more yeah absolutely so on tour you are exposing yourself out on this tour network by broadcasting this this v3 onion address right and uh basically you're trying to traverse the tour network through all these hops uh to try to find that that host right and since the relays are really deteriorating you get a high chance of failure now with 
LNC, it's all about the mailbox. The mailbox is your golden ticket to your node. Basically, when you create a session, your node says, yo, mailbox, uh, I'm here. This is my session. If someone comes to you with the, the magic keys, they can access my session. They can get to my node, right? So you're not going to have any connection issues as long as this mailbox out on the clear net is, um, you know, up and accessible. And, uh, you know, we're expecting these nodes to be run by, you know, just professional teams so far, but like a lot more services are going to come on. So, you know, right now you're banking on Lightning Labs uh, to just make sure that node stays online. And I think they know a thing or two about keeping services online. You know, beyond that, uh, Zeus is going to have a mailbox that you'll be able to use. And I'm going to do my damnedest to keep that thing up. But yeah, like I said earlier, beyond that, we're hoping that every service that uh, is taking advantage of LNC Uh, goes ahead and decides to run their own mailbox. So if one service happens to go down, which is probably going to be very unlikely as uh, it's quite well-architected software, is very performant, you'll at least have the option to hop to another mailbox. Or, you know, maybe uh, users will decide to spin up LNC servers on Voltage. Maybe you guys down the road say, hey, maybe we could charge people a couple bucks and we do a one-click install, pop in your host name, and we give people a mailbox they could employ. That's something I would love to see. (laughs) You know, down the line, I'm sure we're at least going to look at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, uh, so yeah, the reason, the I think I think it, what's really, really important here is that even though this is uh, a clear net thing, your node is 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 not being doxed, right? Your IP address or uh, if, you know, it's you're not required to run clear net on your actual node public key URI string or anything. That can still be fully Tor. This is strictly an external connection right yeah absolutely so if you want to still use tor as one of your uh options for connecting to the lightning network on port 9735 you can still do that this is a separate connection so that's like a d- common misconception that uh your connection to the lightning network is the same connection that you're making for uh your remote calls to say something like zeus uh so yeah they're completely separate that's one thing i i wanted to iron out because at voltage i have to uh i get several support tickets for frequently about that sort of thing cool uh bobby is there anything you want to add on to that before we start talking about echo and some other stuff if he's around <laughs> no that's cool okay uh i guess we could talk about echo a little bit if if uh if we've exhausted uh where, we're, where we were just at cool i mean yeah let's let's kick off into echo and uh you know if something comes up or bobby wants to hit on another topic we just go on and circle back so echo so Echo is the second application that we're releasing under the Zeus umbrella. It is a web application for now. You can go and visit it at echoln.com. And it is a podcasting 2.0 player. You know, I don't, didn't really hit on it earlier, but I basically made Zeus at first to scratch my own itch, right? Like I wanted a tool that I could use remotely to manage my uh, node on the go when I was going on the bus into the city every day, right? Echo sort of scratches an itch in a similar way in that I frequent a lot of podcasts that support podcasting 2.0. I love the whole idea of it. The fact that you could pay someone with Satoshis over the Lightning Network per minute at the rate which you think that the producers of the show deserve on this value for value model. I love the whole idea of it. I just wasn't satisfied with any of the players. You know, I I don't want to down talk any of the applications. They don't do a bad job overall. They just weren't for me. Like the other options out there, you're either running a dedicated lightning node on your phone or you're conceding to uh, like a custody model and and while I think they make for some pretty good UX it's not what I wanted I wanted to go and say hey I got this lightning node in you know on the web it's set up I use it every day with with Zeus I want to be able to use that same node with that same wallet for when I listen to podcasts. So at Lightning Labs, we went and we took this uh, LNC thing. We brought it over to NPM modules and and we published this thing called LNC Web. And uh, I was going to be presenting at TabConf in Atlanta, Georgia, a little bit about this module. And uh, I was like, okay, that's that's awesome. But, you know, we don't have too many examples of things that are using it. So like other examples of apps using it are like, so Terminal Web, right? Uh, it's in there. 
Uh, we've got it in Lightning Market, which is really rad. There's like a Ring of Fire tool that people use. Uh, and there are a few others. But I'm like, I wish we had a really good example of something I made. So what I did was basically I got boots down on the ground in Atlanta. I'm like, all right, let me start hacking around with this tool I helped build and see what I can do with it. You know, in, in pretty much, what, four or five days on the ground in Atlanta, just hacking on a few hours a day while I was there at the conference. I actually got to hack on it sort of live in like a live setting for uh, Nifty Nye. Uh, it was like base uh, 58 slash pleb labs, uh, like live codathon. And I was like just hacking <laughs> there. That was a terrifying experience. If, if you're a coder and you want to just be in, in fear when you don't remember the syntax or something and your fear of getting embarrassed, I highly recommend doing some live coding. But yeah, at, at the end of these four or five days, we came out with Echo and Echo pretty much leverages Lightning Node Connect, pulls from the podcast uh, index and, uh, you know, lets you add subscriptions, listen back to these podcasts, send boosts, which are like tips in the app. You can send it to any producer you want. And Boostagrams, which is like a message saying, yo, uh, you know, your podcast is great. Thank you so much. And here's like 10,000 tats or something. So yeah, Echo LN, it's uh, just a little bit of a hobby side project for now, but we're hoping to uh, extend it more, tighten up the UI, bring in some more devs and ultimately i think bring it to mobile because i'm usually listening to podcasts out and about so uh, we don't have firm plans for that in place uh just hoping to dive into that in 2023 you know just evaluating the best way to, to go about that you know just really wanted people to have a podcasting 2.0 player where they can just plug in their own node yeah hoping to build on that have some more options for people to connect with different node types keep supporting what i think is this incredible movement in podcasting 2.0 yeah i uh i just want to uh it's funny you say you scratch your own itch because that is um advice that someone I deeply respect told me when I was learning Python, which I'm still like a really bad programmer, but I play around with it occasionally. And it was always like build stuff that you want to use yourself. Like, don't worry about like others, you know? And I, I think that's awesome that both Zeus and Echo sort of came from that. Yeah. I mean, like I, I can't, I can't echo that enough. All the successes that I have seen in my career and in you know, becoming a better developer, they have only come when I was fully invested in an outcome that I wanted to reach, right? I wasn't just like learning stuff for the sake of learning them. Like that's that's just not the way I, at least I operate. Like in some cases to a certain extent it works, but largely the greatest strides that I have made in learning as uh, improving as a developer and in, uh, you know, making impactful products has been building something that I wanted to use. And any chance you can to do that go down that path even if it is more challenging you're just gonna be able to like reach into yourself and find that extra juice to get over the finish line uh, yeah I, I, I couldn't imagine myself going and working on something i, I don't like and, and i'm not invested in the outcome of anymore just, just a little sprinkle of inspiration for anyone out there that needs a needs a little bit of motivation so as far as echo goes right now though you said you're you you know the vision is to have it on mobile is there a repo that we can get in and play with it now in some way and in, in a is it a browser uh sort of app now or yeah uh, so, what is it right now so right now we only have the web version uh that's at github.com slash zeus ln slash echo uh you can go ahead and and pull it down, run it like an NPM app, uh, just NPM install, NPM start. And uh, you actually do need to get a API key from the podcast index, but they hand those out like uh, like candy. Just don't abuse it. Uh, that's, that's a good team over there. So yeah, so you have the option right now to either pull down all the source that is free and open source, very unrestrictive license, open um excuse me, AGPL3, just like Zeus. And if you're not a dev and you're just a user, you want to try the product, just go to echoln.com. And uh, as long as you have uh, LNC and Lightning Terminal to generate a session for you, you can go off to the races and start using it today. It's really cool because it's not just the, I don't know, I think it's like 10,000 podcasts now that support podcasting 2.0. But the way we have it set up with a podcast index database, you can search, I think it's 4 million approaching 5 million podcasts on the planet. Planet. So even if you're not streaming sats to, you know, all those podcasts, you can still use it as a web player that works pretty well. A, a lot of these uh, podcast 2.0 apps use uh, 
like ln url and stuff is is that how this works or like are we doing bold 11 invoice like i uh, just talk about a little bit of the payment flow a little bit uh nate that's a fantastic question what you're doing actually with these payments um is actually just a uh, key send push payment. So basically, you are taking the node recipient's public key and uh, pushing a payment forward with uh, you know a send payment API. So um, love it. Yeah, it's super straightforward. Like you could actually extend this protocol. Like if you really wanted to, you could do something crazy and like pop in Bolt eleven invoices. But that wouldn't really make too much sense. Moving forward, Bolt twelve offers could make sense in here and. Uh, uh, you could probably also pop in lightning addresses. It just happens to be that for this use case, you know, pub keys just work really well. Perhaps, perhaps there will be more offerings for uh, like custodial settings, like people who may not be hosting their own stuff. You know, the, the protocol that they're building over there is really extensible and I'm excited to see it grow. I think they'll be able to make it cater most of people's use cases. So, and the actual sort of English message or, you know, language messages is also uh, through the key send payload. Yeah, so those boostograms, those like tip messages, uh, yeah, just using those key send payments. Uh, basically, you have a payload that has to be encrypted in a certain way. Echo just handles that all on the back end for you. So I just got to type in your message and whatever language you so please hit send and it'll get you there. Yeah, it's just overpay uh, key send. Cool. It's interesting how like key send was so cool a few years ago and then ever since LNURL everyone kind of jumped on that train but Keysend is still I think the easiest way to pay somebody that doesn't need to know anything about where the payment came from like tipping for example it's amazing it's just a static thing yeah I think people's main thing with Keysend is how the invoicing works it's a little harder to keep track of but uh, yep. I I think effectively it works great in this use case and, uh, you know, something people should champion. It's awesome. You know, don't get me wrong. I love stuff like LNURL and, and Zeus supports all the major LNURL features. But uh, moving forward, I definitely see stuff like what we're going to see in, in Bolt 12 as far as the offers and voice formats there to supplant a lot of that stuff. But we'll see. Bobby, can we do questions from the audience if you're there? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, if anyone wants to uh, raise your hand, feel free. We can dig in and uh, go through some questions. Time went by really fast, Bobby. I don't know if you have any input there. No, no, I love listening. I love hearing you get into the technical nuance and everything. So that's that's great. Hey, off zero. Question for the, you know, I, you kind of were going over, you kind of had my answer my question in regards to the tour uh, with Zeus. Uh, is there any chance to, you know, like possible, um, maybe down the, the future, I don't know if there's demand, but you know, maybe kind of like linking like a thunder hub say if you wanted to connect with somebody like open a channel mobily i don't know if that's again i'm not you know into the weeds so much but just from like a user from a user you know, like ux experience like say if you just meet somebody out and you wanted to connect the channel is there any like possible way maybe down the future or is that something that even like remotely even possible uh yeah so like let's say you guys are both zeus users and you're meeting up in person at a bitcoin meetup or in a bar or something uh you could open up a channel to each other today and we can do it right through we can do it through zeus yeah right through zeus so uh if you go to uh the main pane in zeus if you top hit the top left corner you'll see like either the zeus icon or like an identifier for your node you'll hit node info on the node info screen there's a list of uris these are like how you're connected to the lightning network you probably want to pick the one that is for ClearNet if you have that option available. Some people just have Tor. And you just hit uh, Show QR. Whoever else has a Zeus node running can scan that QR and uh, they'll be prompted to open a channel to you. All they have to do is select the amount and what fee rate they're comfortable with sending uh, for the on-chain transaction that opens it. So yeah, you could do that today. Oh, well, I, didn't, I didn't know you could do that. And then uh, my second question is uh, with Echo, is that kind of uh, is that kind of like similar with like with Sphinx, with, like Sphinx chat, like the, the process? Process, like the, the project is it kind of like like a sphinx chat so to speak as far as the podcast player it is working just like sphinx chat as far as the lightning payments the messaging the boosts all the same under the hood we just don't have like the uh, social element the, the chat rooms and whatnot i will say that we're really i've really been interested in 
interested in messaging over the Lightning Network. I'm not so sure we would do like a social chat rooms, but I'm definitely intrigued about the prospect of perhaps having messaging in Zeus where I can go and just like say, hey, Nate, they're like, yeah, I'm going to shoot you a line over Lightning. I, I just think that the idea of that is really cool. So maybe we'll see that soon. All right. Thanks, Evan, man. When you get a chance, man, come back with, uh, come back to the Philly meetup. Uh, we'd love to have you, man. Take care and I appreciate the voltage. Thanks, guys. I'll see you there. Cheers. I, I love key send messaging. Uh, it's built in a Thunder Hub and it's been built in a Thunder Hub for a long time. And back during when uh, Plebnet was first starting, we were playing with it a lot. It was, it was pretty cool. I would love to see something like that built out a little bit more. Yeah, uh, we're definitely going to be doing some investigation. So now that, so it's no secret, Lightning Node Connect is coming to Zeus. I'm probably going to be doing some integration work on it today. Uh, we actually just finished up work on the LNCRN module yesterday. So it's prime time to put into Zeus. I'm hoping to do some, some like betas, maybe alpha releases uh, real soon for people to get testing. But I, I bring this up because with LNC and all the streaming it has, uh, the RPC calls, it really makes it more conducive to the sh chat application because you're able to like subscribe to events and get messages in instantly. Whereas Zeus in the past using like rest calls, not impossible, but not ideal for like streaming messages and getting notifications and stuff like that. So I think it's just about prime time to start digging into the possibilities there. So yeah, I'm, I'm getting pumped about that. Hey, what's up, Jazz? Sure, you guys know that I haven't been doing, uh, been in Bitcoin for like a year at this point, a real lightning uh, world. And one of the main reasons why I had a kind of hard time, uh, you know, dealing with it, a lot of things change, a lot of things are, you know, very complicated, et cetera, et cetera. And at this point, I basically don't use lightning anymore. It's just not, just not worth it. Um, in my eyes, um, I tend to just use on chain stuff and that's fine for me. Do you think, you know, we're so incredibly early in lightning that it's just kind of absurd for most people to even really care about it at this stage? Is it, you know, mainly for developers? and just uber nerds to kind of um, have fun with at this stage? Oh, great question, Chaz. Uh, good to hear from you. You know, it is challenging, right? Because we are really just at like the start of this thing, I would say. You know, it's, Lightning's been around a few years. And we do have like this nation state that's sort of using it. I would say that if you're in a like low fee environment, like on and you're just buying stuff online, for the most part, like, you know, on-chain transactions will, you know, suit you well. But I won't expect us to have like a consistent low fee environment first and foremost and secondly like you really need lightning if you're going to be dealing in meat space with like vendors and not wanting to worry about confirmation time now on the other side of things like yeah there is so much complexity and for the average person they're like not really going to want to manage all their channels so like there's definitely going to have to be more tools that go and, and make things easier on that front a lot of people are you know consumers at the end of the day are going to be using like products that try to help abstract those complexities away similar to how we see in something like a moon but uh yeah i mean in a lot of people's eyes a lot of people just see the lightning network as like a playground right now we're talking to barack you know, exploited LND a couple times the last month. And uh, he felt that he was justified in, you know, putting people's funds at risk because he just thought that LN was a playground. He said the, I don't know, what is it, 5,000 Bitcoin on Lightning Network deployed right now was sort of a pittance sum. And, uh, you know, to some extent, he's, he's not wrong. Like, that's sort of some rookie volumes compared to other, ser other services that are around in the space. So ultimately, yeah, I think we're early. Ultimately, we do need things things that make it easier for people to use and, and more abstractions, uh, definitely more consumer friendly tech. But I think ultimately these rails are what people are going to be operating on long term. And, you know, despite the challenges we see with UX and development and adoption, you know, there's so many great signals that I have been seeing that have been encouraging. Just like seeing this month, people going to their grocery stores in South Africa and uh, being able to buy groceries with the Lightning Network. Like, that's a massive step. I mean, I'm in, I'm in it for the long haul. I know there's a lot more work to be done. But uh, yeah, we, it's good to be realistic about where we're at right now, despite where we think we're going to get to. Quick uh, side question about Echo here, if you don't mind. Sure. Always, Chaz. Always feel some questions from you. So I just downloaded the, downloaded the code here and opened it up in Visual Studio. And I did npm install npm start and i'm getting um a module error in request utils have you seen that with the 
it's not seeing config.json. Oh, uh, so in the, I should have specified in the readme, we've got some instructions. You also have to copy the config uh, example JSON to config.json uh, and also get got some it. API keys from podcastindex.org. Uh, but yeah, once you get that set up, you'll be flying off to the races. You really do need to get those API keys because that's how we like query the podcast index. And since most podcasters don't host their own RSS feeds, they're relying on the service service to embed their payment details in there. So that's sort of the magic that makes everything work, at least for now. Uh, but yeah, if you want to hack on it, uh, you know, happy to chat with you later day and pumped to see what other people get involved and what contributions get made. I think uh, it's just the start of something really cool. Thanks, y'all. Cheers, Jess. Yeah, I, I kind of... If we don't have any other questions, I kind of share that feeling sometimes. Once you're in it for the long haul and you see that vision, it's just kind of like it is a playground, but it's kind of like like a like a arc, like a developer that's building a, a skyscraper and all we have is a big hole in the ground right now. <laughs> it's like it's like we know what the building is gonna look like, but everyone else looking in on us are like, "What the hell are they doing with that big hole in the ground?" <laughs> it's like it's like be patient. We're building something here. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, I'm, I'm, I mean, there's, I think there's still room for these things to fail, ultimately, like if they are neglected, if we, you know, there, there's so many fatal conceits we could have that could cause Bitcoin as a whole to fail. And I think that's even amplified more so with lightning, which can easily get supplanted by something else. But I just don't think that's going to be the case. Perhaps something else comes and beats lightning, but it'll only be because be as a result of what we did learn from lightning and uh you know we'll, we'll be able to um, patch the issues with it or, or you know take those lessons and apply them and, and make something better but more realistically i see us uh, iterating on the lightning network and having incremental improvements until it becomes a whole other monster where <laughs> we're not worrying about channel states channels can get abstracted in three or four different ways uh, consumers are coming and connecting and interacting with the network work like three or four different ways all of which they do have uh control of the keys that custody of their funds yeah like listen like i'll be the first to concede like we have a lot of work to do but you know every day we take some steps to make lightning easier to use in the wild and you know um i think we're seeing the effects of it hey evan i know we're getting close to the end here um do you need to jump right at four or are you good taking one or two other quick questions uh i am game to hang around as uh as long as people keep shooting questions. So yeah, I don't have a hard stop. So uh, we'll jump over to Ronald. What's going on, Ronald? Hey guys. Uh, hey, first of all, Evan, thank you for Suze. It's a, an amazing thought piece of software that I use it with Voltage uh, Node and it's just the answer to all my problems. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I think you already answered this question uh, when you mentioned that uh, LNC will also include the capability of uh, using uh, or passing commands to Taro, D, uh, Taro Demon. Uh, is this something that is coming to Zeus as well? Uh, just the capability of minting assets, uh, distributing the proofs of, of said assets and, and actually visualizing, make, even making channels for Taro assets. Thank you. Great question. I personally am very excited by the prospect of Taro. I think it opens up a lot of possibilities and access one hell of a Trojan horse to the traditional like banking industry. I am not committing to anything right now, uh, but I will say I, I am very intrigued by Taro, and there's a good chance that we see some form of Taro functionality in Zeus. Probably would not expect it too soon. Uh, we want to see Taro working in lightning channels. Hang tight and uh, just know that you know every day, as we get closer to that point, I'm evaluating things. All right, and it looks like um, Satsumoto's back in. Hey, sorry, my mic was off. Um, I just uh, wondered, as a as a, our company is also building um, an application that lets you stream Sats for charging your vehicle. If there's any kind of control limitations over using LNC versus kind of embedding your own Lightning node within the application? Uh, for an application developer, you will probably have similar effects. Well, I'd say like more so, I would say that the way things are built right now, LNC is more conducive to having a user connect their node in an application 
over LNC. Whereas if you want to expose your node to like a backend application, you could still do so using the Golang code. Uh, but uh, you might want to just look at different methods, like perhaps a traditional REST or RPC interface at that point would make more sense for you. I'd say it really depends on the application. Yeah, I was wondering if it, like providing it as an option maybe in the future to either connect through your own hosted, personal hosted node versus having the embedded node running might be a good kind of balance to have. Yeah, if you're pr creating an app where you're providing some sort of wallet with a node embedded on it and want to give someone an option to to remotely connect to, then yeah, like LNC, that, that's where it'll really shine, I think. I think that's a great use case for it. Okay, awesome. All right, well, if there's no other questions, um, Evan, we appreciate you taking some time chatting with us, man. It was valuable and uh, happy Wednesday. I hope we have a solid rest of the week. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, always love the opportunity to chat about Zeus and all the other stuff I'm working on. You know, throw us a follow on Twitter. We're ZeusLN. If you're checking out the app for the first time, we've got a website at ZeusLN.app. All, all the code is free and open source. And uh, if you want to contribute, we're always looking for more contributors. The whole project runs on, you know, the gracious contributions of outside uh, contributors. So we've got a GitHub. We've got a Slack if you want to get in the ring and have help pack with us and we've also got like a user telegram which will probably be conducting most of our alpha testing stuff through there so if you want to get your hands on zeus with lightning node connect built in and countless other features that we're adding in 0.7.0 super excited about it just hop in there and uh you know keep your eyes peeled. awesome well thanks everyone for attending thank you evan and uh we'll see you all next week thanks everyone bye cheers literal <laughs>